Okay, so we are going to start the first section of chapter 9, and we're going to talk about mole ratios. So this chapter is all about continuation of stoichiometry, which we talked about last semester, along with all the types of reactions that we talked about last semester. So things are going to keep cycling and, and coming back. Okay, so let's talk about some chemical reactions. So a chemical reaction is basically a change that involves the rearrangement of atoms. So we can't create any new atoms, and um, so that's why we balance equations. Okay, and we can't incorporate different elements. Okay, that would violate the law of conservation of mass, and that's why we write correct compounds. So all of that stuff with writing the neutral compounds and balancing the equation, all of that is involved here. So equations give the identities, so the types of atoms, and the quantities, or the amount. And balancing determines how much product is produced. So by looking at the coefficients, okay, that tells us how much product we're going to make, and we balance so that we don't violate the law of conservation of mass. So the coefficients, those numbers we put in front of each compound, so for example, you know, 2 O2, this is the coefficient, this represents the relative number of reactants and products. So this tells us the number of moles of each reactant and product, and that's going to become really important in a second. Okay, so let's look at an example. So if we want to make a sandwich, let's say traditionally we make a sandwich by taking two slices of bread, three pieces of meat, and one slice of cheese, and that equals one sandwich. And so we can write an equation for that. So we'd say two pieces of bread plus three set slices of meat plus a slice of cheese, and that produces one sandwich or one product. Okay, and we could also write one sandwich as br 2 m 3 ch right, because that represents our elements and the quantities. Well, what if we wanted to make 50 sandwiches? How much of each reactant would you need? Okay, so think about if this is the reaction for one sandwich, how do we decide how much stuff to buy if we want to make 50? And hopefully what you thought about is basically you're going to multiply this simple ratio of 2 to 3 to 1, and you're going to multiply that ratio by 50. And so that would end up giving you 100 pieces of bread, 150 slices of meat, and 50 slices of cheese to get 50 sandwiches. Even though our ratio is the same, 100 to 150 to 50 is the same thing as 2 to 3 to 1. Okay, and so we're looking at that mole ratio. Okay, so let's take this reaction. We've got water decomposing. Okay, so we've got one reactant, two products, uh, into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So we can use those coefficients as the number of moles. And so two moles of water will yield two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas. And we're getting those numbers from the coefficients. Remember, the coefficients are going to represent the number of moles. Okay, well, what if instead of two moles, we had four moles of water? Well, since our ratio is still two to two to one, if we had four moles of water, in order to get four, we have to multiply this by two. And so we multiply everything through by two. And that would mean that for every four moles of water, we'd have four moles of H2 and two moles of O2. So the mole ratio is staying the same, that ratio of the coefficients. So really, we could do any quantity. What if we wanted to, you know, what if we had 5.8 moles of water? Okay, so we would figure out what it took times that two to get 5.8. And all we'd have to do is take our calculator, 5.8 divided by 2, and that comes out to 2.9. So we would multiply everything by 2.9. So we'd get 5.8 to 5.8 to 2.9, but our ratio is still the same. Okay, so a mole ratio is a conversion factor, just like molar mass, atomic mass, Avogadro's number, all those conversion factors we talked about before. But this one is used to convert between moles of different substances. So now we have a way to go between compounds in a reaction, and that's really helpful. As before, the only conversions we knew were within the one molecule. Okay, so let's take that water equation and figure out number of moles of O2 that will be produced by the decomposition of 5.8 moles of water. So first, we need to write our equation. So we know it's a decomposition of water, and we know it's going to go to oxygen and hydrogen gas, and this is where that predicting the products and um, all that stuff 
is going to come back into play. So what I usually do is write all my information underneath each species and then I don't have to go back up into the problem. So I'm looking for number of moles of O2 and I know that I'm starting with 5.8 moles of water. This is a really good idea to write all of your stuff down here because things are going to eventually get more complicated and it becomes this big word problem. And if you can organize your information, it makes solving the problem much easier. Okay, then we're going to start with what we're given in the problem, just like all the other conversions that we've done. So we have 5.8 moles of water. And we're going to set up our railroad tracks, fence posts, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so this is where our mole ratio comes into play. I know that for every, ooh, step two, balance the equation. Mm, that is so important and it's so easy to forget. So star that or highlight it or whatever, but balance before you do anything else. Okay, so if I go to balance this, I have two oxygens, so I want two water. Remember, my compounds are already written correctly, so I cannot change the subscripts. The only thing I can change is the coefficient. If I put a two out front, I have now balanced my oxygens, but now I need to balance the hydrogens. Well, here I have four hydrogens, so I needed two out front to make four there. Now I'm balanced. Okay, now I can move on to step three, which is the calculation part. Oh, don't forget to balance. It's so important. Okay, so I know that for every two moles of water, I produce one mole of O2 based on the coefficients. And the coefficients represent the number of moles. So since I want moles of water to cancel, that goes on the bottom. And I know a relationship between moles of water and moles of O2. That's through the mole ratio. And so I know for every two moles of H2O, I've got one mole of water. That gives me the units that I want because these are going to cancel. And so now I can calculate. So I'm going to take my 5.8, 2 is on the bottom, so I'm going to divide by 2. I could multiply by this 1, but it's not really going to do anything. And so I end up with 2.9 moles of O2. Remember, our last step is significant figures. If I look back up into the problem, I have two significant figures. I have two in my answer. I'm good to go. Okay, calculate number of moles of O2 required to react exactly with 4.3 moles of C3H8. Well, if these are reacting, this tells me that they are both reactants together. Okay, so again, first thing I need to do is write my equation. If I look at my reactants, I've got oxygen gas and this carbon organic compound. It looks like a fuel. So to me, this seems like a combustion reaction. And because of that, I know that my two products are always water and carbon dioxide. And so now, of course, before I go on, let's balance. Uh, let's see, based on three carbons, I would start with a three here. Um, oxygen is distributed in more than one location, so I would balance it last. Let's go to the hydrogens. I have eight on the reactant side and only two on the product side, so I'm going to put a four out front. If I count up all my oxygens on the product side, I have four from the water and six from the carbon dioxide, so that gives me ten, and so I want a five out front. Okay, so now I'm balanced. Now I can write all my information underneath. So I'm looking for number of moles of oxygen, and I have 4.3 moles of my pro propane. I think this is what, so this would be, this is an organic compound called propane. So let's start with the 4.3 moles of the C3H8. I want moles of propane to go on the bottom so it will cancel. Based on the mole ratio, I know a direct relationship between moles of propane and moles of oxygen. And if I look at my balanced chemical reaction, which is where I'm going to get the mole ratio, I know for every one mole of C3H8, I am needing five moles of O2 to react. And so this will cancel out my moles of C3H8. I am left with moles of O2, which was what I want. And so I'm going to take my 4.3 times 5, because 5 is on the top. I could divide by this 1, but it's not going to do anything. And so I end up with 21.5 moles of O2. <clears throat> now if I look back up into the problem, I have three significant figures. I have three in my answer. I'm good to go. So mole ratio will work across the reaction. So I could go from reactant to product, product to reactant, uh, like I did here, reactant to reactant, product to product. Since the equation is balanced, 
that ratio of, in this case, 1 to 5 to 4 to 3 will hold no matter what I'm converting between. And so <clears throat> mole ratio is the way you're going to convert between compounds, and that is really, really important. Okay, so if you want to convert between compounds, you must use the mole ratio. That is the only conversion factor that will convert between compounds. Everything else is in terms of the one um, compound. But mole ratio is the only thing that will go between based on a balanced chemical reaction. Okay, so last one. Calculate number of moles of NH3 that can be made from, okay, so it's being made, it's a product. Uh, so made from 1.3 moles of H2 reacting with excess N2. So we have H2 and N2, and I'm trying to find the number of moles of NH3. And I have 1.3 moles of H2. Okay, I've got my equation written. I've got my information written underneath my reaction, and now I need to balance. And so let's see. I've got two nitrogens on the reactant side, so let's get two on the product side. Remember, I cannot change the subscripts. The compound is written correctly. The only thing I can change are the coefficients. And so now that makes six hydrogens total, and so over here I want three. So now I should be balanced. Let's start with what we're given in the problem, which is the 1.3 moles of H2. I know I want moles of H2 on the bottom. I know a direct relationship between moles of H2 and moles of NH3 because of that mole ratio. And now if I use the coefficients, I know for every three moles of H2, I've got two moles of NH3 that I'm producing. And so moles of H2 will cancel. So now I'm going to take my 1.3. I'm going to multiply by 2 because 2 is on top, and then I'm going to divide by 3. You don't have to enter in between or anything. You can just do this all in one shot. And I end up with 0 0.866, so repeating, so I'll just put 7. Okay, and this makes sense because this is basically 2 thirds, so 1.3 and 2 thirds of that is about 0.87. So it's really good to also check your answer, make sure it makes sense, and that you didn't flip some numbers around. So if I look back up into the problem, I have three significant figures. One, two, three is there. So 0 0.867, and my units are moles of NH3. So basically, given this quantity of hydrogen, I'm going to produce 0.867 moles of NH3. Okay, and so that's all based on this balanced chemical equation and that ratio. Okay, so... Um, you know, we'll do some practice, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, have a good day.